injecting testosterone seems like, if you don't need it, first of all, seems like a bad idea. And I know that there are a lot of people on it, and there are a lot of people who say there are benefits to adding in testosterone. What happens if you're a, a person with, like a man with regular levels of testosterone, and you give yourself a little boost? Well, it depends. If you give yourself a little boost, as in you push yourself a bit higher than what you are naturally, essentially. Yeah. You know, you're essentially shutting down your entire, um, rep not your entire reproductive system, but from like an actual testicular health aspect, you're essentially shutting down the signal to them in order to minorly elevate your levels just for some hopeful improvement in cognitive sharpness, you know, muscle building potential, et cetera. Like oftentimes I think people are misdiagnosed through poor lifestyle and diet habits and they will haphazardly jump on T because they have a, they go into a, you know, a lab corp or whatever it is. They get a testosterone test done. They transiently through one snapshot in time at one moment, they had a, you know, 250 total testosterone level. And then they interpret that as, oh, I must be low T perpetually and it's negatively impacting my life. I need to get on TRT. But there's all the low hanging fruit, even that we addressed at the beginning. Those are just a couple of things. Those things are so impactful on testosterone production yeah. that if you overlook those and jump right to the drug route, you could be overlooking things that could get you back to a healthy state otherwise without the necessity to rely on these hormones. So I think a lot of people, some people do need it for sure. And there's like absolute utility in it. And it's very, very effective when it's needed and warranted. But a lot of people, I think, haphazardly get on it and may not otherwise need it. And then they end up reliant on it for their entire lives. Okay. Okay. So what, what ended up happening with my husband is he was having tree allergies. So he was tired. And that mm. was the end of the story. And now he's not having them. So it, it like, that would have been a just, brutal, just... a brutal <laughs> reason to get on for sure. Yeah. Uh, okay. So you said reliant. So is there actually no way to get off of it once you're on it? So if you were a healthy functioning male with good testosterone levels prior, if you got off within like a reasonable time frame, like you know, there's not really a reasonable time frame for replacement because you're supposed to be replacing what you otherwise don't have. So it's like you're essentially, you know, using something, you're you're artificially shutting down your system that otherwise didn't need to be. And you could get back to your natural function dependent on the duration of exposure. So if you've been doing TRT for like 15 years or something and you technically didn't need it when you started it, are you going to be able to recover to natural function if you then decide, oh, I want to try and come off? It kind of depends because, <laughs> again, it's almost like mm. there is a use it or lose it kind of thought process that goes into different organs in your body. So if you shut down the signal to your testicles for a decade and a half and you have like shriveled atrophy testicles and then you try to recover to baseline, it's not as simple as just pulling out the testosterone and then everything just works correctly, perfectly. Like you're going to deal with a very, very arduous recovery phase whereby you might end up hating your quality of life so much on that recovery phase that you just end yeah. up staying on the testosterone. <laughs>